Oh, God, you are really loud. Let me turn you down. Uh, that's me speaking softer. Uh, hey! Silver, the sewers are flooded. Yeah, it's been, uh, raining a lot. Here in Texas. It's been raining a... Oh, yeah, Jesus. Oh, yeah, Jesus Creesums. It came down kind of hard yesterday. Uh, where I am, there wasn't any hail. It was where I was. No hail where I was, but... Goodness gracious, did Gatesville get baseball-sized hail. Yeah, uh, the sky was green at around, like, 5.30 last night. Yeah, if, if the sky is gr if the clouds are green, that means there's gonna be hail. Yeah. And, I think uh, it has something to do with how light reflects off the ice, I don't know. Yeah, and hail, uh, when it's, like, mm. you know... 80 degrees out usually means a tornado. Yeah. Luckily, there was no tornado here in Austin. But it No looked... tornadoes around me either, though I was under tornado warning. Yeah, I think we were too. I think it might have just been all of my county, though. The same. But yeah, Dinks got... Dinks went from, like... Pretty decent to really fucking bad real quick. Uh, anywho, that means that we are here to bring you some perfect Reddit cringe from these flooded yes. sewers. All right. With all this flooding, this means it means that a just a bunch of stuff is washed down here, and goodness gracious, does it smell? Oh yeah. Like, uh, your story, which we will begin with. Yes, hold on, let me, uh, let me get a drink so I can wash the popcorn out of my mouth. Hey, you're eating popcorn, I'm eating Nerds Gummy Clusters. Mmm, jealous, I, I want- I would be I'm eating, a... uh, Swedish Fish, but the, the convenience store I go to get these doesn't have any. No. Yeah. It's Look sad. at me in my my genuine my genuine anguish. Look at my face and in no Can't pain. Can't you see my emotions? God, that's how I feel in VR chat. My character model always smiles. Yeah. Imagine having just like an existential mm -hmm. crisis in VR chat, and your character's just, just like smiling the entire way. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> So we start off with, uh, not a continuation, but a prequel of the previous week's story. There was uh, a continu- there was a continu- well, there was an update to the previous week's story, but it just boiled down to, like, the DM just cancelled the campaign altogether after the, the player the was being The campaign dick. and the one-shots they were in. Yeah. Which sucks. Um, yeah. So, posted 10 months ago, not to D not to RPG horror stories, but to r slash D&D, uh, by user Umbra Dominus, uh, 825 upvotes, my DM feels uncomfortable about role-playing a lesbian girl. What should I do? Oh, I'm not a native English speaker. Sorry if my, if my grammar's not the best. So, my DM's preparing a C-Punk campaign. I've been role-playing with the guy for almost two years now. This is the first time he's gonna DM for a campaign. Because of that, I decided to do a rather simpler character. She's the captain of a, sh captain of a ship, has a strong personality, and she's madly in love with someone who's in prison because of her. The problem starts with that NPC that's in prison. Even though I could make them a boy, I decided it would be it was more interesting if that person was a girl. I'm really used to creating LGBT characters, I've been roleplaying for five years before meeting this group, but I never made one for this group, so the DM, one, is kind of worried I can offend the other straight players in the party. Who gives a shit? Two, feels kind of uncomfortable having to roleplay as my character's partner when the moment comes. Edit. Thanks to the replies in this post, I realize the problem's not that the NPC is female. My DM just just doesn't feel comfortable roleplaying romance in general. 
A thumbs up on that, then. Yeah. I don't really- I, I really don't want to change how my character is because he says he doesn't have a problem with it, and he's more worried about how I'm gonna handle it. However, the fact that he feels uncomfortable about role-playing as, as that important NPC kind of ruins my plans. What should I do? I don't know if I should say, if, if I should say I can role-play as that NPC too, or if I should tell him that, that he'll have to overcome his uncomfort since he was the one who accepted my background. Any help? Now, we do have a couple edits. Yeah, later on us. Edit 1. I think I should have clarified that the DM told me it was okay for him if I made this lesbian character. We came up with the idea together and everything. I asked him if he was uncomfortable with my character's sexuality, and he said no. Bold. Not bold, but caps. I think I think the problems with him roleplaying the NPC and the way my character expressed her sexuality more than the sexuality itself. Also, my character has a lot more than just being a lesbian. That's something minor, but I just like the idea. Finally, one of the players is a lesbian too, and I myself am, a, am bisexual. So no, the DM doesn't feel weirded out by real LGBT people or anything. Second edit. <laughs> hey guys, so I actually talked to my DM about this already. You were right, he's more uncomfortable about romance in general than about my character's sexuality, but he's still worried I can say something that triggers him or the other players at the party at the table. He admitted to me that he's worried because this is the second time he's DM'd. I don't know that- I didn't know that before, don't kill me. And the first time he did, things went wrong. He doesn't want that happening again, so, but he, so he's just really paranoid about a lot of stuff, just in case everything goes down. And I told him not to worry, uh -huh. and I... Oh, uh, hold on, what? Is this the DM that ran the... Uh, is this the DM that ran the campaign that uh, ended up ending because of the problem player, or is this the one that ran the campaign the problem player wasn't even in? Uh... I'm not entirely sure. I think it might be the one that the problem player's not in. I'd have to check. Alright. Uh, let me open their page in another tab posts uh player gets angry poodly doodly doodly doo you know my best my favorite way to uh. eat nerds gummy clusters mm. yeah just suck on them until the nerds uh dissolve and then just chew on the gummy uh. part unabated mmm I don't even know what flavor the gummy part is. Hmm. It's just uh, red flavored. I'd have to like scroll through the whole. Uh, I'd have to read you know, the whole story. It doesn't again matter. To figure out who, what's who. It doesn't matter. Anyway, Let, let's just assume it's the one the problem player's not in. Yeah, I told them not to worry. That well, even if it was, uh, they said that uh, the problem player wasn't in any of their original games. He was like a later edition kind of guy. Oh, okay. Uh, I told him not to worry, and I and I told him that if he felt uncomfortable by roleplaying my character's partner, we could find her another motivation during the campaign is character development, and he could kill the NPC off. Even though she's in prison, she has one of those devil elixirs. So we find an NPC, or so we find an enemy or an NPC that has the same elixir, we'll know that the past partner is dead. So everything can go well if that, if he at any point decides he's not comfortable with the situation anymore. Plus, I added a little more things to her story, story so my friend feels a little more comfortable. Things like some people who helped her helped during her travels with no romantic feelings for her. And my friend can put some NPCs here and there with, with, with which he can be comfortable. Finally, I spoke to the rest of the party. They're fine with my character being like she is. I actually discovered one of the other PCs is non-binary. So mine's not, only, not going to be the only one in the, in the LGBT community. I think everything's solved now. Uh, thanks so much for all your comments and helps, and for staying, even though I made a little bit of clickbait, haha. <laughs> I don't know how to write posts on Reddit yet. Have a nice day, y'all. I don't know... I, I don't think I've ever been in a campaign that didn't have at least two LGBT characters. Hmm. True, true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, alright, yeah. so it's good that that ended up getting resolved. It's good that the problem was just the DM was 
uncomfortable uh, role-playing romance. However, that should have... That's something that you should probably bring up uh, in session zero before the campaign starts. Uh, just and then be like, hey, I'm not comfortable role-playing romance. So while you can have partners, just try to limit role-play with them. Or, you know, we could just fridge them as part of your backstory. Because, you know, that's a common yeah. thing to happen. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, the DM should definitely state what they are and aren't comfortable with. It's in sessions here. It's not just the players that need to set boundaries, but also the DM, uh, in order to avoid confusion. But this DM, it was their second time DMing, so it is understandable that they didn't necessarily have the experience, uh, to remember what all bound all the boundaries that needed to be set when doing session zero if they had a session zero it's, it's understandable this is just this is a perfectly reasonable uh situation to have happened with the experience uh that the people had as well as uh the context around it you know yeah 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 uh, all right <clears throat> So for my story, uh, mine is an ass. Is am I the asshole? Am I the bad guy for not having fun at the table? And yes, yes, we will be <laughs> rating it uh, at the end. So uh, let us get started. Um, God damn it! I popped a gummy cluster into my mouth right before. <laughs> Why would you have food in your mouth when you're about to read? You silly. I wasn't they're, they're delicious. Alright. You're too tempted. Look, I am like... I, I am like Eve in the Garden of Eden. I wasn't told not to. <laughs> it was the other person that was told not to, so it's perfectly safe for me to do it. You know? Alright. Ahem. <clears throat> So, this was posted five days ago by Pitiful Lock 2867 It's got 47 updates. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I just came back uh, to a long-standing campaign after a four-month hiatus due to my wife and I having our child. Oh, congrats. Um, congrats. Prior to this, I have been in a fantasy homebrew setting that... Uh, oh, and I think... Yeah, I, I'm hearing myself... Just very slightly on your <coughs> mic. Really? Yeah. Wild. Uh, anywho. Let me, uh... I've been doing a fantasy home... I've been in a fantasy homebrew setting with my friend... Uh, that my friend made, and from what I can tell, everyone else at the table, six PCs, were all having a good time. I just came back and my character leveled up... Is it better? Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's better. Uh, right, cool. my character leveled up three levels, and VM gave him, gave him a really cool, uh, magical weapon to scale with the rest of the party. And I was super excited to get back into the fray. I can hear you drinking that straw. Uh. Yeah. Alright, so, however, after coming back, my character was introduced back into the group. Uh, because he had sought their help to fight off a wicked disease spreading in my hometown. However, two sentences that start with however in a row. Not not a, not a good uh, prose. You're, that's typically not supposed to... You're not supposed well, to do that. Well, they're not professionals. I know, but it, it breaks up the flow of... It, it breaks up the flow, you know? Alright, so, however, upon arrival, my s first session back was during a wedding ceremony to one of the other player's characters whose stories had been wrapped up. And at the end of the ceremony, 20 or so high-level PCs that let us know apparently were all ready to cast Counterspell uh, were, re were ready to arrest the party. Uh, for a series of events that culminated in us freeing a slave race of Rose Elves. 
Uh, he made it very apparent that it was either death by combat or go with them. So already starting to feel a bit railroaded. Uh, so already feeling a bit railroaded, but I was... I think they're missing a word there. Uh, but I was <laughs> willing to go along with it and see where he was going with it. So we get whisked away. Uh, they misspelled whisk. Um, to some impenetrable prison city, locked away in secret jail blocks, and was told out of character that we couldn't cast any spells over first level without being caught or counterspelled. There was no common area, or there was a common era area with a bunch of previous NPCs that we had met that were also arrested, and apparently you can b bribe around to get messages sent to other party members, but can take but it can but can take two weeks to get an answer back uh, no one knew what to do and with six people at the table uh, one player at a time would speak to a random NPC for 30 real-time minutes so you would wait an extremely long time uh, to talk to anyone and some people wouldn't talk at all for an entire <coughs> session. For a entire session. Uh, me and the other PC managed to get exchanged to the same cell block and tried to break out, but were met with a warden that's level 17 and carries a vorpal blade and has legendary resistances and was literally impossible. Despite a very calculated effort, we were thrown back in our cells and told to wait it off. And we could be in here for, uh, for several in-game months before anything was resolved. The player that tried to break out said at the end of the session that no hard feelings, but he wasn't having any fun for several sessions and decided to, to drop out of the campaign. This greatly hurt the DM's feelings, but he, had, he did it very appropriately, I thought. He took it very hard and next week was floundering about the DM's feelings, uh, but he, oh wait, it was floundering about trying to get through the session, but, oh no, get through the session. I waited until after the session to see if things improved before I mentioned I wasn't having any fun, but they didn't. So I decided to open a dialogue uh, about me not enjoying the direction of things, but still loved him as a DM and would still love to play. And I just wanted to voice my concerns to see if a course correction could could happen. But he just shut down and ghosted me for a while and now he's shutting down the entire game for the foreseeable future. And now I feel guilty. And I know for a fact that 50% of the players at the table felt the same way as we all discussed it. Uh, so yeah, um, am I wrong for voicing concerns? Should I have waited several more sessions, uh, of not having any fun before saying something? Or should I have just finished the arc and kept it to myself? TLDR, came back from d, &D hiatus to be thrown in a long jail saga with the party where it feels like no one has agency and, uh, could last several sessions. I told the DM... I felt a bit railroaded and started a dialogue, and shortly a thereafter, instead of talking about it, he, comma, got his feelings hurt and quit the campaign. What did I do wrong? All right, so, drum roll. Hmm. Is this person an asshole? I'm going to say no. Yeah, nah. If they're being honest in how they uh, went about it, then they are not the asshole. Um, I can hear everything you're doing. Look, I had to turn off the noise. I had to turn off the... Why is Crisp off? I don't look, know. But look, I had to turn off my, my other noise suppressor because it was making... Lag. It was... A horrible audio lag. Yeah. Anywho, uh, I don't think this person's the asshole. What about you? <laughs> nah. Uh, if you're not having fun in your game, I'd I say it's best to bring it up. Yeah. 
Uh, that way the DM can change. Sooner la rather than la rather than later. Yeah. Uh, as you know, I brought up that I wasn't having fun at last session. Yeah, because I threw you into a fight after a boss fight without giving you mm. a chance to rest. Yeah. Yeah, which I did listen, and I will take that into consideration in the future. Because, you know, I'm a reasonable DM, and I'm not going to shut down the entire campaign just because one of my plans didn't work out the way I thought it would. Yeah. Unless, uh, unless what happened results in the campaign, like, being impossible to move forward, like a, a TPK, or f fucking up right at the end against the final boss. Yeah, as, as, as Lavir and Mal go sword to sword, both are 17 feet tall. Have you ever seen Mal use a sword? Rippling with muscle. Mal doesn't use swords. Look, maybe not normal Mal, but super-powered 17-foot-tall Mal might. I wouldn't turn Mal into a sword boss. Because that's boring. Like, this isn't... I, I do like Dark Souls, and I do like that the toughest bosses are just a guy with a sword. But I'm not going to do that to Mal. Mal... Mal has... A particular set of skills. Skills that they, they've they accumulated over the Don't course of Don't you dare bring references to career. this. Oh, God. Yeah, no. Mal's forte is magic and a whip. Huh. Uh, but, yeah, mostly magic. Uh, anywho. Magic. Yeah, no. I can't, uh, I can't snort like... I can't snort like... Uh... Yeah, what's his name? Who? Mr. Bean actor. Oh, Rowan Atkinson. Yeah, I can't snort like Rowan Atkinson. I don't think anyone other than him can. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I don't think this part... I, I think the DM was completely unreasonable. First of all, that entire scenario... I don't know what the hell the DM was thinking... Doing it like that. Like... If you're gonna throw the party into a jail... Give them the ability, like, give them a period of time in which they can get together in the same room to uh, plan an escape. Like, you don't, yeah. Like, maybe communicating through an NPC can work for, like, half of the first session uh, in order to organize a place, a time and place to meet up proper. Uh, yeah, or, you know, just... Have someone have one of the have them meet the carrick meet the jail cell, you know, through the tiny little gate window. Yeah, or have an NPC uh, have yeah. have an NPC infiltrate the guard and like uh, like infiltrate uh, and disguise as a guard in order to help the players. Yeah, or you know, just have just have the bard of the party cast shit your pants on the bar on the guards. Yeah, uh, but no, the bar, you have to make sure that <clears throat> first the bard gets a ketchup packet so that they can uh, uh, spill it when the guard uh, runs off to go clean themselves so that when they come back, it looks like the bard's been horribly injured and is dying. You know, basic uh, prison escape stuff. Or hell... Give them a goddamn spoon so they can tunnel out. Yeah, just Shawshank that shit. Or uh, yeah, El just Chapo. fucking dig, nerd. Oh god, did you hear about that one uh, prisoner who spent five years digging a tunnel, and when he finally broke through, uh, he dug straight into the guards' uh, 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 common room, like like the 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 lounge, the guards' lounge or whatever. That's some Looney Tunes ass shit. Oh yeah, and I'm not, I'm not, hi, I'm not being speaking with hyperbole. That has happened in Looney Tunes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anywho, uh, so uh, I guess that 
really concludes that the lessons that we learn here is um, communication with players. Like, yeah. The, yeah, the first one was the DM having good communication with players. The players uh, came up to them with a problem and they worked it out um, and uh, continued on with the campaign. Uh, the second one, uh, the DM did not communicate with the player properly and just sh completely shut everything down uh, because their little prison escape wasn't as fun as they thought it would be, I guess. I don't know how... Like, prison escapes can be fun, but, you know, you gotta let them collaborate. Like, can you... Look at Guardians of the Galaxy, for example. That had a fantastic prison escape scene. Uh, and the reason it was able to be pulled off was because the characters were able to, like, all talk together and formulate a plan. Like, if they had... Who to doesn't love a good riot? Who doesn't love a good prison riot? Absolutely. God. Man, y'all need to get your... The False Sun crew needs to get arrested so they can do a prison... Uh, escape. Look, I've already been in prison. Yeah. Anywho. I've uh, done my nickel. Yeah. I did my waiting. Twelve years of it. I served my nickel. I ain't going back. They said that it would take a hundred years to dig through that wall. It only took twenty. Hmm. He's the only man I've known who could crawl through a hundred yards of shit and filth and come out the other side a clean man. I like Shawshank. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Oh, you should. It's got Morgan Freeman. I'm aware. Yeah. Anywho, uh, that'll conclude podcast for the day. I can smell you. I'm creeping around the corner. Uh, All right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We 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 went on. Mm -hmm. We got off topic a bit. Anywho, uh, thank you everybody for watching. Definitely watch uh, some of the other stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, Biddy, what are you playing? I'm playing Metroid Prime. And you had watch a yesterday's mi episode. It was it's miserable. A doozy. The phase on mines. Play, and let me tell you, the next episode, that's not much better. Yeah, the next episode. Uh, there were some miscalculations, and it was an even more miserable time. Yep. We probably could have gotten an, another two episodes out of it, actually. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, well, yeah, because I... I didn't think that... It, it didn't take that long when I was doing the things. When I did the things that you did, it didn't take me as long... And also, your game was actually glitching out to, uh... Yeah, not not to spoil, but uh, there is a glitch that made a, made a boss fight much harder than it needed to be. Yeah, impossible, in fact. Anywho, uh, there's, um... Also on the channel, I'm playing Sonic 06, which is a much more enjoyable time. Uh, still, just as... Even more glitchy and dog shit, but at least with the expectation of being glitchy and dog shit, and I am having a blast with it. Um, there is also Cult of the Lamb, Bishops of the Old Faith, uh, the, the new Cult of the Lamb DLC, which Scraps is playing. Uh, and there Sweet. is Tabletop Simulator. There was no episode last week uh, due to technical difficulties, but next week, as in, like, six... Five five days from today, uh, Thursday. Four, three, two, one. Blast off, perhaps. Earth below us drift. So, uh, Thursday the fourth. Uh, keep an eye out if you want to see us play Cluedo. Hopefully. Uh, anywho, uh, comment. Cluedo's like sorry, right? No, it's Clue. Oh. Cluedo is the British version of it. Oh. Literally the same game, just. With I'm thinking of. Oh, sorry. I'm thinking of Ludo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, Cluedo is just the original name for Clue. Uh, anywho, also 
So, uh, comment challenge of the day. You got anything? Um. Uh. Is there you excited for that for that TF2 summer update? I don't. <laughs> I mean, that's gonna heavily date the video. Uh, how about this? Um, every all of our videos are dated. We give when the we we give when these posts were made. I know, but the comment challenge. If someone's watching like five years down the future, they can still comment in it. A comment challenge of the day. If you're watching this five years in the future, uh, you excited for that heavy update? <laughs> it'll come any day now. It'll it, it, it'll <laughs> it'll involve new hats. <laughs> No, no, for real. Comment challenge of the day. Um, is there a time in which uh, the DM just caused the campaign's enjoyment to just take to plummet? Um, I know what your answer is, cause you know we experienced that last week. I mean, I'll be honest, anytime I'm in a situation where I can't really do anything, I'm not exactly having the most fun. Oh, that's fair. But, uh, for the last time it happened, not last week, but the time before that, when you were fighting the, uh, the cultist initiates, that wasn't my fault as the DM. That was Jules' fault for casting darkness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So some sometimes the you not having fun is the fault of other players. Yeah, yeah. Anywho, uh, with that oh out well. of the way, there's nothing left to say. But good night, everybody. Bye.